السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد Welcome to a new episode of the Art of Da'wah and today inshallah I'm going to be sharing some Islam stories um, like so many people I'm interested in how people came to Islam so often time you will see me watching videos on YouTube on how people accept Islam and, and their journey and so on and so forth. So historically, you will come across amazing stories. Like if you read the story of Salman al-Farisi, uh, how he came to Islam, it's an amazing story. So if you have the time, please go and read about his story. and Or maybe uh, there is like a lecture or something about the steps that he took. He was the first Persian to accept Islam and the Islamic history is filled with stories on how people came to Islam. Um, so the, the stories are so many. And the reason why people are interested in these stories is that people like me and the, the majority of Muslims, they are born and raised Muslim. So sometimes you take Islam for granted. Sometimes you fail to appreciate Islam. But when you listen to these stories, how people struggled, they had to read, they have to uh, move from one ism to another until they came across Islam and something that touched their hearts, something that motivated them, something that moved them to accept Islam. And, and again, it's different from one person to another. Maybe it's just the Quran when they read the Quran because this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they read the words of the Quran, even in translation, they still they still get some of the blessings of the Quran and it moves them and they accept Islam. Maybe someone will accept Islam because they came across a good Muslim. Maybe because they came across a logical, rational argument for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the fact that Muhammad sallallahu is a prophet or that the Quran is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the, the stories are so many. So today, inshallah, in the next 10, uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you uh, three stories that happened with me personally. So over the last 15 years, uh, I've, I've given shahadas probably to hundreds of people so far. Alhamdulillah. So many people have taken shahada. Uh, so I'll just give you three examples of these uh, stories. So the first story actually happened in London, UK, and this is 2018. So I was there with a group of 19, uh, sorry, 15 imams from uh, Canada. So we went there to receive training with Ayira, mashallah, at the uh, Ayira headquarters in London, UK. And before we left, we, uh, we went to do uh, street dawah. So basically, we're there... Uh, doing street dawah in London, UK, and people are busy. So basically, it's like Toronto, Canada here. People are busy with their life, straight face. People don't smile. They're just about business, right? And we're standing there for like a couple of hours, more or less. And, you know, we had a couple of, you know, intellectual conversations, but that's it. SubhanAllah, that day, I had uh, a fellow Imam, his name is Ma'moon, Sheikh Ma'moon Hassan. Um, so we saw this guy, he's, he's a street clown. So he came, he was dressed up in, in, in yellow, in gold, pretty much like me, with his face paintings, uh, a street clown. So this is what he does for a living. So, you know, I assume that the people with me thought, you know, don't waste your time with this guy, he's just clowning around. You know, so subhanAllah, I stopped the guy and I said, hi, how are you doing? What's your name? And he said, my name is Aaron, the clown. And I said, do you have a few minutes? And he said, yeah, I have a five minutes because he has a performance or something. So uh, we had only five minutes to talk to this guy. And usually when you do, uh, when you talk to someone about Islam, some of us usually tend to give the most insanely philosophical arguments to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prove that Islam is the truth. So 
I just told him a, a story I learned from Ayira. And I told him, Aaron, just imagine that you uh, uh, you open your eyes one day, you found yourself on an airplane, and you don't remember ever going to the airport. You just found yourself there. So you start to ask yourself some logical questions. Who put me here? Why? And where is this plane going? And I told him, uh, do you think these questions are logical? And he said, yes. And I said, now you wake up and you realize that you were dreaming. This was a dream. And before you woke up, you asked the people on the plane, who put us here? Where is this plane going? And why are we here? So nobody seems to know or care. So you wake up and you realize that you were dreaming. Okay, so now I told him, Aaron, this plane that you found yourself on is just like planet Earth. You open your eyes, you found yourself here. Okay, why? And who put you here? Where is this plane going or this planet Earth going? And I said, if you read Surah Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran, it gives you answers to these exist existential questions about your existence, right? So who put you here? Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the universe. Why? So we can worship him and seek his help. Where is this plane going? Maliki Yawmiddin. So you can stand, you can land in front of the master of judgment day to, to be accountable for your actions. So just two minutes, I told him the story. And I said, uh, Aaron, do you think we are here for a reason? We're just here to clown around. No pun was intended at the time. Uh, so eventually, three minutes later, Aaron the clown took his shahada. And I remember he was the only one who took shahada on that day. Subhanallah. And uh, before him, uh, we spoke to another brother. His name was Tom. He had some intellectual questions. I answered him and I stayed in touch. We exchanged uh, contact info. And eventually, subhanallah, he asked for a uh, copy of my translation uh, the clear Quran, I sent it to him in London, UK, and a few months later, he accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. So now two people took shahada on the same day, uh, one on the same day, but the other one, uh, it took him maybe about six, seven months uh, to, to uh, make up his mind. So this is the first story. The other story, so basically happened like five, six years ago. So we had a winter program. And we basically, uh, four students, and we invited someone to play some tricks. You call it magic. But anyway, uh, so he came to play some tricks. Very tall guy, mashallah. And he came. He had an assistant, uh, Christy. And, you know, before they left, they performed for like half hour. They played some tricks and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, taking a bunny out of top hat and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, I said, subhanAllah, if... If magic is real, this guy didn't have to drive for like one hour in the cold winter of Canada just to get a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks. If magic was real, this guy would just sit in his living room. He would just put his hand in the top hat and he will take ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, one thousand bitcoins. He would be rich. He didn't have to work anyway. So before they left, I handed out a copy of the uh, clear Quran to each of them. Then they left. And four years later, this lady came in hijab because we started a class for new Muslims. Uh, so she came and she said, do you remember me? And I said, I'm not really sure. And she said, I came four years ago with the, uh, you know, with the magician and you gave us copies of the Quran. I read the copy and eventually she accepted Islam. Subhanallah. Even though I totally forgot about what happened, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides people to a sirat al mustaqim. So it could be something small like a flyer, a copy of the Quran. And subhanallah, the, the clear Quran is now available like two, three dollars. Khalas, that's like a cup of coffee. So this is the uh, second story, someone coming to uh, Islam through the Quran. There's also another sister who accepted Islam, I believe, uh, six years ago. Uh, she was born and raised here in Canada, Catholic. So eventually she had some doubts 
and she left. She became an athe atheist, and she started to look into different things, all the isms, this ism, that ism, that ism, and eventually nothing made sense. Uh, she's a scientist, so she used to go to uh, a local uh, university here to study uh, science, right? So she, she is a scientist. So and anatomy and these different things. So she used to look closely at how the human body is made up. The perfect creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the human body, around us, how the eye functions, how the liver and the kidney function, how the heart function, functions. And subhanAllah, she was amazed by the, uh, the marvels of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the human body and also in the universe, the galaxies and the stars and, and so on and so forth. And she came to the conclusion that it is impossible for something like the eye or the heart or the liver or the kidney uh, or your DNA to make itself. So it has to have a master creator, uh, a great designer. And this led her to look into, uh, to investigate other uh, belief systems and to look into scriptures. And I happened to give her a copy of the Quran uh, when she visited my mosque uh, several years ago. And subhanAllah, I remember on Eid day, Eid al-Adha, she came and she took her shahada. So as you can see from the three stories that I mentioned, one accepted Islam because of the Quran, one accepted Islam because of the fine tuning in the universe and the creation of the human being, and one accepted Islam because of a simple logical argument. Uh, from what I have seen, most of the people accept Islam are women. And statistically, 75% of all the people who accept Islam are women. For every four people who take shahada, three of them are women. And the reason is when they see, they read the Quran and they see that how women are honored in the Quran, how Islam gave so many rights to women 1500 years ago that women in the West started to uh, get in the last century or so. So subhanAllah, uh, everyone is different. Every story has a different flavor. And subhanAllah, it's always good to watch and read and learn from the stories of the new Muslims, which will basically help you. If you're born and raised Muslim, it, it will help you grow in faith because it will help you appreciate Islam. Islam came to you the easy way. You didn't have to struggle. You didn't have to keep jumping from one faith to another, from one ism to another. By reading these stories, it makes you established in your faith. It makes you appreciate Islam and you don't take it for granted anymore. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless you and for uh, joining us today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and protect all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide everyone to the uh, straight path, to the Salat al-Mustaqim. See you next time, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.